to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 802. I'm Kristen Amdahl, and we are here live in Southwest Florida at the beautiful beach. Uh, there's something so special when we go back to daylight savings time because we actually get here closer to sunrise and the water's so peaceful. The sun is a little less harsh, although it's already hot. Uh, well, I did a for project photo shoot already this morning and I'm already exhausted, but that's okay. Hi Thea, Judy, Val, good morning Grace. Hi everybody, thank you for joining me. Hi Lisa, Melanie, Joe, Sean, good morning. Happy Monday everybody. Welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. I'm Kristen Amdahl and we are here live in Southwest Florida. Hi Christine and Angela, Sanchel, Kimberly. We are at the beach and it is absolutely gorgeous here. Hi Julie and Lily, Barbara, uh, Leona, Joyce, good morning. The sun is right in my eyes. I've been trying to adjust this. I've already moved up a couple times. Let's see what I can do here. I've been trying to get out of the sun because it's pretty warm, but um, looks like I'm not gonna be able to get out of the sun, so I'm just gonna be sweating. Anyway, <laughs> yes, it is beautiful here this morning. It is a beautiful beach. It's a beautiful morning. Thank you all so much for joining me. I, uh, I took the podcast off last week, as you know. Uh, turns after 800 episodes, I just kind of, uh, well, it wasn't even about the podcast. It was about things going on in my personal life, being a single mom and having some issues that, you know, sometimes you can't have all things stressful all at the same time and you hit a wall. And so between finding that there were so many extra things that I had to do for the new website behind the scenes and, you know, while writing a book and then everything else gets put on, put gets backlogged when I write a book. So then there's there's just, whatever I do, everything else gets backed up, you know? And when the website needed extra work behind the scenes, it just, and it still does, uh, it required hundreds and hundreds of extra labor hours on my part. And as you know, I already work almost 100 hours a week to begin with. So to find something like that and try to fit that in, just really put me to my limit and then having personal issues come up with my family uh, I just kind of last Monday the idea of going live and having to put on a happy face when I was not happy at all just felt like the straw that broke the camel's back so to speak and so it's I never want to be fake with you guys, and although most of the time I try to be authentic about what's going on in my life, I was so sad last Monday and felt so broken that I just was like, I need to work on everything that's been backed up behind the scenes and not worry about hair and makeup and not worrying about smiling on camera for a couple of days. So I, it's not that I took a week off and went on vacation or even sat around eating bonbons or reading books i was working behind the scenes on things that i needed to catch up on that were so incredibly behind because of everything else that had been going on so uh i'm sorry to disappoint anybody for not doing the podcast for a week but i just i needed to focus on things that i felt needed to get done while licking my wounds you know sometimes we just need to be able to, the kind of work that I do involves being, having a face all the time and having to talk all the time. And I felt like I really needed a little bit of privacy to deal with what I was going on. The good news is things that were making me sad and I don't really want to sit here and talk badly about anybody. So all I can say is being a single mom is hard sometimes. And you'd think after 18 years, I'd figure it out, but nope. Uh, I didn't and I ran into some major struggles being a parent last week and I'm sure lots of you can understand that and when you get really sad and heartbroken about things like that can you imagine having to go on camera and pretend like it wasn't bothering you like it just it, it was like I said it wasn't the podcast isn't a problem talking to all of you isn't a problem 
none of these things individually and isolated as a problem. It was all of it all at the same time and I just kind of unraveled. <laughs> I just unraveled and I thought the only thing that made sense was to at least uh, hide a little bit. So I just decided to hide and work instead of work under a spotlight. So um, it was just for five days and we're back now and I feel like I've regrouped. I don't feel so overwhelmingly behind on all my other projects. So I do feel a little more in control of my workload. So, um, yeah, being a single mom is really hard. It really is. Uh, and you know what? I thought, you know, every stage I thought, well, it can't get harder than that. Nope, it does. And the older a child gets, even when they're 18, the less control you have. And when you have less control, it, the pain gets worse. Uh, that's all. Yeah, new week. <laughs> hi, MG. Hi, Migdalia. Hi, Anna and Diana. <sighs> so anyway, I have finished a bunch of projects. So I will have new... <laughs> so I will have some new patterns coming soon. We already have one pattern available, and that is the uh, Margo cardigan. And I will stand up so I can show you all the amazing details about it. I... Uh, Thank you, Sanchelle. I appreciate it. Yeah, and don't even, I mean, and that's not even trying to fit into the mix of trying to not be single anymore. Whew, that makes it even worse. And I most of the time don't uh, focus on trying to not be single, but every once in a while I put myself out there and uh, boy, that doesn't add to the mix either. Anyway, okay, so I am wearing the Margo cardigan today how cute is this so like imagine you could do so many things with this so in the pattern it tells you that you could stop here and make a shorter cardigan or once you split the sides and make the vent you could go as long as you want then I went to what is this about mid thigh you could keep going from here without adding any increases once you put that side vent you could make it a duster length now too you could add sleeves you could leave it sleeveless you could, um, so the sleeve starts where about here. So you could leave it sleeveless or you could add a sleeve. It comes in tons of sizes starting at 34 inch bust and going up to 52 inch bust, I think. Believe there's six sizes to it. There are seven charts in this pattern. So not only do you get the detailed written instructions for all of those sizes, but there is a chart for the upper fronts, both of them. There, it's, not, it's not like, oh, just reverse the shaping from this one. Uh, no, there are charts for both sets of increases because you increase at the beginning of the row and the end of the row, depending on whether you're doing the right or left front. It's a chart for both. There's a chart for the upper yoke. There's a chart for the body. There's a chart for the sleeves because they're worked in the round instead of worked in the rows. There's a chart for the sleeve cuff. There's a chart for the collars. There is a chart for the edging on the side vents. Cause guess what? All of this stuff is really similar and I could have easily just wrote, you know, slight modification for this blah, blah, blah. But no, I did a chart for every single thing that had any bit of difference. So uh, I would consider this a pretty easy pattern, Kat. The, uh, there is, there's no raglan shaping. These pieces are made uh, like there's a flat front, a right, flat right front, flat left front flat yoke in the back. The sleeves are picked up and worked onto it. Um, I would call this closer to um, beginner than, more closer to beginner than advanced. Obviously, if you've never picked up a hook before, it is a garment. It's not a scarf or a doily. So I would say if you are, if you've never picked up a hook before, maybe this is advanced beginner because it's a garment. But as far as patterns go and as far as garments go, definitely on the easy side for sure there is the only shaping is some increases here and here to create the v-neck uh, and that's really really simple in the realm of shaping and uh, everything else has worked even even in rows and even in rounds so it's really simple and the stitch pattern is really simple we've got a row with some five double crochet shells and single crochet and then we have some rows of chain three single crochet mesh like 
it doesn't get much easier than that. So I think that you will find that this could be a Zen project. It is a wardrobe staple. This kind of a cardigan, whether you chose short sleeveless, short sleeve, uh, three quarter sleeve, long sleeve, hip length, duster length, I think that you could, and then picking colors, I think you could use two, three, four, or five of these in your closet. I know I could. I think going with neutral colors for a couple of them, and then darker colors, like picking a color that matches your denim, picking a color that's neutral to go over anything, picking some pops of color that are your favorite colors, like things that you notice in uh, your wardrobe or in your accessories. I think there are so many different ways to make this uh, and I think you're going to enjoy making it and I know you're going to enjoy wearing it. I love wearing mine. I think that you're going to love it. Yes, Cindy, it's absolutely perfect for the office. It could go over a blouse. It could go over a tank top. It could go over a dress. It could go over anything. You could add buttons to it if you want. You could add a corset tie if you want. You could add a belt if you want. There's, I mean, you could do so many things with this pattern. It is so flexible. There's so many options for modification. And when I say modification, I mean easy modification. We're talking adjusting the length and adjusting the sleeves. That's it. Uh, everything else is perfect, is not perfect. Nothing's perfect. I'm certainly not perfect, but everything else is written out in detail. Uh, I wore it over shorts today, Lisa, to give you an option from different from when I wore it over jeans the other day. Uh, cat. I couldn't read all of that. It went too fast. You went to my website on Mother's Day. I'm guessing you're in the UK then. So I believe it was UK Mother's Day recently. It hasn't been US one yet. I don't know why they're different. Hi, Lorraine. Thanks, Lisa. Yes, this length cardigan looks cute over pants or over shorts that are shorter than the cardigan. That is an interesting difference. I forgot my brand new umbrella today, so my camera has already started overheating. Maybe we'll pop up into the shade. I've already moved up into the shade twice. I think we're going to need two again because we're not too far into the show. Let's do this again. All right, I'll go grab my stuff. Not everything made it up on the drag, so I have to go grab the bag still. All right, so lots more patterns coming soon. Would you like to see some sneak peeks of new patterns? I, uh, so the Margot cardigan is out now, but I've also finished a few other patterns, and many of which are already through tech editing too. So I just need to, uh, I needed to photograph them. So that's what I came down here early for this morning, which is why I'm a little overheated and sweaty already. Ah, okay, I'm seeing a bunch of yeses. Okay, so the Gladys Shrug in Biso Toast. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is Biso Baby Yarn in Color Ecru. The Gladys Shrug with those amazing motifs in Biso Toast Yarn. This is a two ball project regardless of which size you make. It is um, it is sized also, even though it's just a shrug. I did size it as well, and I'll try it on real quick for you. Uh, that pattern will be out very soon. I came here to do the photos for it this morning, and uh, eventually I'll have videos for all of these as well. But in the meantime, the patterns come with multiple sizes, detailed instructions, plus charts. Uh, you don't need the videos for sure. They're nice for a supplement, but you don't need them. So how gorgeous is this? I This came, this one I think I did in four or five sizes. I believe it's five sizes, because I am I made mine in the large. So it's a small, medium, large, XL, and 2XL, I believe. And this is the large. I wanted it a little bigger. It is absolutely stunning. I am so excited about it. I could wear it over everything and anything. I think the shape is gorgeous. I think the size is gorgeous. So. If you keep in mind, I'm a 38D bust. I uh, wear somewhere between a large and an extra large. I'm 5'9", around 190 pounds, and I made the large. Beautiful, right? So beautiful. 
maybe not over this outfit. I think I'd wear it over, I think it would be great over a dress. It'd be great over, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I would wear it with these shorts. But, wanted you to see it. I guess I would wear it over these shorts, why not? Shrug you can wear over anything. So, is this lilac? Uh, the color is called Eclipse. It's Be So Toasty yarn and it's color Eclipse that I used. Comes in lots of solids, lots of variegated colors. Thanks, Sanchelle. Yeah, I, I think a shrug works over anything. Um, I actually like it with a tank top because I like seeing the skin under the lace. Um, thanks, guys. Yeah, I can't see very well because uh, my light went dark, but I guess I wasn't, I didn't mean that it would, wouldn't look good over shorts. I meant it would look good over anything. So like, don't be, uh, don't look at me and go, oh, I would never wear a tank top and shorts. With that, you could wear it over lots of different things. You could wear it over pants, a dress, all sorts of things. A shrug works over anything. So having said that, we'll take that one off now. And so, saving the biggest surprise for last. Uh, so then I did finish the beach bag or big tote bag that I made in Be So Baby Yarn. What did we call this? We called this the Lisa Marie. I decided to stick with uh, female Elvis names <laughs> for spring. And so this is the Lisa Marie bag and it's done in five colors of Be So Baby Yarn. This is chocolate, ecru, turquoise, aquamarine, and peacock teal. It is so gorgeous. I love this bag. And it has that sandwich bag fold, accordion fold for the top so the top closes up, which is such a nice feature when you're doing a large bag and you don't wanna put a closure on it. You could still put a button here and a chain flap to close it, but with this type of a closure, it does cinch up the top for you a little bit as well. And I did a five strand braid for the strap. And like I said, there will be videos for all of this eventually. In the meantime, there are detailed charts and written instru instructions for all of these patterns. And these, since I did the photos today, these photos will be out soon. Now, you, um, I did a new knit shawl pattern too, and I did it in the Be So Fine gradient kits, and I used color denim blue. Are you ready to see? I love this shawl. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. I did the same color sequence that I did for the Priscilla Circle Shrug. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five. Remember? Ta-da! How pretty is this? So this ends up being only one kit of the Be So Fine Gradient Kit. So you could pick any of the colors. Pink Coral's back in stock. Neutral is back in stock. Turquoise Gradient, Green Gradient, and Denim Blue Gradient are all in stock. And it is a one kit, one gradient kit project. Isn't this beautiful? And it has charts for every single row of the pattern. So as you can see, this is a repeating pattern, right? So we have actually 13 repeats of the scallop pattern. And so the charts represent one repeat, So, you, but you could read that repeat and know to repeat it 13 times across the row. So there's one garter stitch, salvage stitch on each end of each row, and then it's 13 repeats of the stitch pattern. And every row, is represented in the chart, which you don't always see in knitting charts, uh, in knitting pattern, in knitting patterns. And I'm very happy to say that it includes all of it. Ah, oh, now what the heck is the name? Gracie. I named it Gracie after Graceland. You know, sticking with the whole Elvis theme. I don't know why I went. Oh, I remember why I went with Elvis because of I watched Blue Hawaii. Anyway, so this is the Gracie knit lace shawl that is a one one ball project, one kit project in the uh, Be So Fine gradient kit of five beautiful colors. This is the denim one. And so all of these patterns are sneak peeks except for the Margot cardigan that I was wearing when we started the show. The Margot cardigan is available now and the rest of these will be coming later this week. And then sometime thereafter, I will do some supplemental tutorial videos how would I use one of my gradient kits for the duster vest? Um, well, you'd have to break up the balls, right? Because you have one small ball of all five colors. And if you were really trying to make everything change color at the same time, 
you would have to break that up. And so you would have to work each component at the same time to make sure that you got all of the lengths equal. So you would want to start the right front, left front, back, and both sleeves all at the same time in order for the colors to all work and be symmetrical. So you would need one, two, three, four. You would need to break up each of the balls into five mini balls. Hopefully that makes sense because it's definitely doable. You could totally do that. Could a beginner knitter do that shawl? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a, um, it's a variation on feather and fan, which is a very traditional old fashioned uh, knit stitch pattern that involves some decreases, some increases and some decreases. So the stitches used in that knit shawl are slip, slip, knit, knit two together, yarn over, knit, purl, and then one extra double increase stitch that is knit, yarn over, knit, knit one, yarn over, knit one, all in the same stitch. And once you get that, it'd be fine. Um, uh, no, Anna, the gradient kit is larger than the a ball, a, a single ball of Be So Fine yarn, but that's a great question. So if you wanted to make this shawl in any of my number one fingering weight yarns and do it in one color, it would require two balls. It's just under 1,100 yards to make this shawl and at 500 to 615 yards per ball, depending on which number one fingering weight you're talking about, um, it, would, uh, it ends up being two, a two ball project in any of the other yarns. The gradient kit has way more yardage than an actual single ball. It's closer to a two ball. Um, it, it's closer to two balls in yardage. So you would need two balls for whether you did Be So Fine Bling Yarn, Be So Toasty, Be So Lush, or Be So Fine. Any of those would be, a, it would be a two ball project, which um, it's so pretty. It would be so gorgeous in any of those. And then you'd have uh, way less ends to weave in too. So there's always pluses and minuses to whatever you decide to do. Um, somebody said that they have some variations with their knit and purl stitches. And I do too sometimes. And what I find is that once you block something, a lot of that becomes a lot more uniform and even. Like even on this pattern, my knit rows and my purl rows did not look even as I was knitting. But once I blocked it, I felt like it did even things out a lot more. But if yours is really troublesome to you, all I can say is keep practicing. You will get better. No matter what you're working on, you always get better if the more you practice, no matter what it is. This is the denim blue gradient, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I do have five different colorways of the gradient kit right now, and they would all be pretty. Now, like I said, I did color sequence one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, so that the colors changed twice. But if you were to uh, want to do a one color gradient, you could do that as well. You would just work each color uh, for one fifth of the shawl. So you could do that as well. Thanks, Lisa. Does anybody else have any other questions? So like I said, the Margot cardigan is out now and you can find that on my website and the rest of these are in process and coming soon. But while I was not doing the podcast, this is what I was doing last week. I was working on these and some secret things that I can't tell you about just yet, but soon. <laughs> Thanks, Grace. I appreciate it very much. I'm very excited about all of them as well. It was fun to get back to garments after working on the hat book for so long. I, the hats were super fun to work at, but um, do the colors change on the end? I don't know what you mean, Karen. Um, the colors, it is five different balls of yarn that I put together to create the gradient kit. The color does not change within each ball, but I picked five colors to in the kit that look like uh, that are all similar. So maybe that's what you mean. Did I cut my hair? No, I didn't, Christine. I didn't. My hair's parted on the other side right now. I normally part my hair on the left and I think it's parted on the right right now, simply because the sun's really annoying me on this side. <laughs> so I'm trying to, I'm trying to not look at the sun. 
nothing like trying to take photo. I mean, it was like, I don't know. If you guys ever tried to do photos outside, like family photos or anything? And uh, trying to do a photo shoot out here and getting sweaty at eight o'clock in the morning was a little bit frustrating. <laughs> Oh well, hopefully they turned out. I won't know till I get home because it's too dark to see on your screen when it's sunny out. But hopefully I got some decent photos of these projects. If so, quite a few of these patterns will get released this week. If not, I'll have to reshoot the photos, but we'll see. And then sooner than later, I will get into the video studio to do some supplemental videos for them. The colors switch to next at the end of the row. Uh, the pattern tells you uh, where I changed color, but I believe I did eight row repeats of each color, Karen. But the pattern tells you exactly how I changed color. I believe I did eight rows per stripe on this pattern. So at the end of each eight rows, I cut the yarn and started a new color. To get that, to get this particular color change, it was eight, row re eight rows per repeat. Eight rows per color. Eight, yeah, eight rows per color stripe. Hopefully that answers your question. If not, ask it again. Uh, all the all of that details are in the patterns, Nargis. Um, I don't recall what size hooks or needles I used for anything off the top of my head, but if you go to any of those pattern pages, it'll tell you right there on the pattern page before you even consider purchasing it or downloading it. And don't forget, if you have if you have registered for a new account on the new website. Uh, and you are logged in when you down, uh, order any pattern or download any pattern, not only do you get reward points for each purchase, that applies to yarn, patterns, everything, but if you download anything while you're logged into the new account on the new website, your patterns are available 24 seven in your very own download library. So yes, you can save them to any of your devices. You have unlimited downloads, but you have access to them on the website 24 hours a day, seven days a week as well. Does anybody have any other questions? Lots of great questions today, guys. Thank you so much. Your questions are always so wonderful and actually help me to describe things so much better. Whether it's giving me a reminder or, uh, you know, just helping me to explain things better from a perspective of someone that's not doing it on my side. Uh, oh, there's Judy. Hi, Judy. Good morning. I brought something to work on this morning, but I ran out of time. I'm still working on my Delta Stitch pullover and Be So Fine Bling yarn. I've got a little ways to go still. It's still just past the uh, yoke and I just started the lower body. You can see I separated for sleeves. Pretty excited to finish that one. I think this is the pat. I think this one's the one called Miley. This is the one that I named after the adorable female lead in Blue Hawaii, which started my whole Elvis uh, inspiration for the naming of the spring collection, which was fun. So I'll start working on that. I'll continue working on that soon. Hi, Judy. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions, everybody? Does anybody have any other questions? Hi, Catherine. Hey, did anybody watch my behind the scenes video last week of the photo shoot from the Margot Cardigan? Cindy can't always get crochet gauge in rows the same as she can in uh, width in stitches as she can engage. I did want to see what your guys, what you guys, what your thoughts were on seeing behind the scenes photo shoot videos. If you would like me to continue to do them, please let me know because I thought it was really fun. And um, I think be, I know when I watch what other people are doing, I love watching behind the scenes videos. So if you would like more behind the scenes videos while I'm doing things to get things ready, uh, just let me know. Would you like more of them? I mean, it's one thing to like the one, but would you like me to do that more, uh, more often? Yeah, okay, so you do want more. Okay, so somebody asked about gauge with rows and stitches, and she doesn't always get, this, get them equally. Um, and they aren't 
always equally as important. It depends on what you're making. If you're making something from the top down where you need to get something the right width, uh, your stitch gauge is way more important than your row gauge because if your row gauge isn't right, you can make more or less rows to modify the pattern, but if you don't get the right width, you're not getting the right size. If you're working something side to side, then it's the opposite, right? So um, it depends on what you're making, and then you can decide which of those has the higher priority. So for example, on the Margot cardigan, if you're working from the top down and you're looking to make a specific size, your stitch gauge is way more important than your row gauge because you could always just make it longer or shorter to modify your difference in row gauge. Does that make sense? One of them always has a higher priority than the other, depending on what you're making. And if you're working in the round, like for a square motif, then it doesn't really matter. Then it's always just based on your row gauge, right? Your row gauge is what gives you your size that, or actually they end up working out equally. Any, uh, well, whatever. Uh, garments is where it's different. So let me know if that makes sense or if it doesn't, and I can try to word it again, but we are almost out of time. So if I don't, if you do have more questions and I don't get to the extra bit of the question, then we can all, oh, it, I did. Okay, great. All right, because we are out of time. So I want to thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the absolutely gorgeous beach. I hope you enjoyed seeing the Margot cardigan and hearing more about it. If you are interested in it, you can download it on my website. You can get the yarn there as well. That one's done in Be So Baby yarn. And if you have questions about anything, always feel welcome to ask. And all of the details for every pattern is available on the pattern page, whether it's how much yarn do I need? What size crochet hook am I going to need? What sizes does it come in? That's all listed there. You don't have to buy the pattern to find out that information. It's there so you can make good choices all on your own before you decide whether or not you want it. Anyway, if you have more questions, feel free to ask. I'm always available. Judy's available via email and I'm available if you just leave your questions in the comments when the live stream goes to a recording. Thanks again, everybody. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.